You constantly learn something new about yourself as you go through life, at least you do if you look hard enough. Sometimes it's a little thing, sometimes it's a big thing. For me, a big thing was learning that I, a man who can't sing due to my unnecessarily deep voice and my lack of any range whatsoever, could actually join in on Christmas karaoke nights by singing the Crash Test Dummies Mm Mm Mm, a track that really sets the party on fire. One small thing I learned happened just this week, in which I found out that I'd never played Spy Hunter. Not just on the ZX Spectrum, which is the version we're looking at today, but just Spy Hunter in general. I thought I'd played it, because let's be fair, it looks like a ton of similar games, in the same way that Ikari Warriors looks like a ton of similar games. But no, I'd never played it, not even once. Another thing I'd learned about myself is that I'm a better driver than most of the guys who turn up in the ZX Spectrum port of Spy Hunter, and this coming from someone without a driver's license. But just look at this shit. What a video! Hi, I'm Alan Partridge, and I drive a car, but not like this. Let's have a look at what this idiot did in America. Before I get into things proper, let me just say that I haven't laughed so much at involuntary car spasms in a long, long time. These drivers have absolutely no sense of their surroundings, be it to the side, to the front, or to the back. They are injected with the most rudimentary of AI, to the point where it feels as though the developers aim to make a Spectrum version of one of those Tomy driving games. And at the end they thought, oh shit, we haven't made the cars act normally. And then they just thought, ah, it's fine. It'll be it'll be fine. Everything's fine. Anyway, let's rewind. Spy Hunter, created by US Gold in 1985 and based on the 1983 Midway classic that I'd never played until now, the game sees you driving in a top-down fashion while the world goes to hell in a handcar all around you. First things first, the game lets you choose your controls, so I went with the standard QAOP and Space to Fire. But don't do this. Don't do it. You'll have a bad time, like me, Rose Tinted Spectrum, because space is pause, and the game doesn't warn you of that, so instead of firing, you'll just be pausing. Why, game? Why? This is not a good start. This is not a good start for anyone. Anyway, one quick reset later and changing my fire button to M, I'm still a little confused. M doesn't fire. But after a bit of fiddling about, and later clarifying in the manual, it seems that M is actually the prepare to fire button, because you'll also need to press a direction at the same time. I've no idea why they thought this was necessary. Actually, no, I do know why. It's because they wanted the game to work with joysticks, and as joysticks typically only had one button to fanny about with, you'll have to make do with this weird control scheme. So, the full controls, for those who care, taken directly from the manual. Fire and up or down will fire the machine gun or rocket if it has been collected and the helicopter is in close proximity. Up and down plus left does the same thing. Up and down plus right does the same thing. Why do they specify this? This is weird. That feels like wasted ink. You don't need to mention that. Instruction manual, stop. But also, carry on, what else is there? Fire and middle waits for weapon of choice. So, so that means nothing, right? You're basically telling me that if I press fire and keep the joystick in the middle, you're going to do nothing. Honestly, this manual. Anyway, moving further on. Fire plus left is oil slick and fire plus right is smokescreen. Actually useful information at last, thank you. In order to get any of the special weapons, the missiles, oil slick or smokescreen, you'll need to board your super special spy wagon, which will appear at probably random intervals. The issue here is that the driver of said wagon is just as much of a maniac as everyone else. 
What is he doing? You'll find that your chances of actually getting anywhere in the game is a mixture of skill and bags of luck, and to be fair to the ZX Spectrum port of the game, that's not immediately dissimilar to the arcade version. The arcade version, as I found out, can be equally cruel at handing out death. The whole ethos of the game, however, is a high-octane point scorer. Shoot the villains, avoid the civilians, get your special weapons, and avoid crashing as much as possible. And while the arcade version does all of that with panache, even if that panache can be a little cruel, the ZX Spectrum port feels like a wonky approximation of the game that inspired its creation. It's not awful, it's frequently hilarious, but it's not quite the same. It's a weird Spy Hunter 0.5, one in which the game hasn't quite had the same rigorous playtesting as its older brother. It's a shame, but it also taught me something else about myself. Apparently, I think Spy Hunter is the funniest game I've played on the ZX Spectrum. Genuinely, I did not stop laughing the entire time I tried to play it. It's like Spy Hunter meets Wacky Races. And that kind of joy can only be achieved if there's at least some level of competence about the whole thing. Spy Hunter is not awful, per se. Things handle just well enough for you to be able to get enjoyment out of it, and while comparing it directly to the arcade version is inevitable, it's also a little unfair. This is the specy, after all. There's enough of Spy Hunter in this version as to be recognisable, but it's one that's being viewed through a crazy circus mirror. It's familiar, but proportionally disjointed. And if you find 12 car pileups as funny as I apparently do, which is a lot, then you'll probably get a decent degree of fun out of the game. If you're an arcade purist, however, you'll notice the wobbly axle a mile off and you'll probably make that noise that mechanics make whenever you switch it on. Yeah. <laughs> 